In 2012, air conditioning related energy bills cost Australians $9 billion. We also spent nearly $3.3 billion purchasing and installing new air conditioning equipment. So it's pretty safe to say that heating, ventilation and air conditioning is having a big impact on the bottom line of your energy bills. A new online guide has been released to show companies how to reduce those costs. To discuss the guide and what it can do to cut your bills, I'm joined by Tom Groskoff, the Director of the New South Wales Office of Environment and Heritage, and Paul Bannister from the Australian Institute of Refrigeration, Air Conditioning and Heating. Tom and Paul, welcome to the program. Now, Tom, sure. if I can begin with you, for some businesses, the HVAC costs represents a, a quite a big chunk of their energy use. If you optimise your air conditioning, how much money could you potentially save? What are the percentage savings? So in simple terms, John, some, business, some businesses can look to save thousands of dollars each year. Putting that in percentage terms, a, a medium-sized commercial building, about 40% of their energy costs are HVAC, and you can save up to half of those. Now, Paul, for the term HVAC optimization, there may be people watching now who don't know what that means. For people watching now who don't know, uh, what is it and, and how can it benefit the business? So optimization is about fixing what you've got and making it work properly. So you've all got air conditioning systems in your buildings. What you want to do is get those components working together correctly to get the best uh, service outcome with um, uh, the yeah, yeah, so you're getting the bit. So in terms of optimising it, so you're making sure the existing equipment you've got is working to the best of its ability. Absolutely, yes. Now, uh, Tom, with regards to the guide itself, uh, how can it help businesses to save money? We've put this guide together with the industry experts, ERA, the, the industry association, and what we've done is we've gone through and looked at and, and catalogued 20 strategies that people can use. Those strategies run from really quite simple things like looking at temperature settings and time of use and that sort of stuff, but also go to the more challenging issues about the way people use energy in their buildings. So dealing with the behaviours, some of those beliefs that people say, it's a hot day outside, I better turn the AC up. You don't need to do that kind of stuff. And definitely don't open the windows, I guess, on that hot day. It's amazing how many <laughs> businesses you know, I've been into, and it's like it's a hot day, they've got the aircon on, and someone opens the window. It's amazing how often it happens. Now, Paul, someone uh, watching now might be thinking, well, you know what, we've got maintenance already in place, uh, so we're, you know, we, have, we have that happening every three months or every six months, so they think that there's nothing more to do. But that's not the case, is it? No, it's not. Maintenance is about keeping your components working correctly. But you might, for instance, have a chiller that's maintained and working uh, correctly, a boiler that's working perfectly, but if your chiller is running all winter and your boiler is running all summer, then that's not right. So optimization is about sorting those things out so your equipment operates at the right time in the right amount. So if I can put a question to both of you then, you've just done this online guide uh, together between New South Wales OEH and, and ERA. Uh, what are some of the things that you can share with viewers at, you know, who are watching now? What are the ways they can reduce energy use? Let me kick off. One, one, one of my favourites is just looking at that issue of when things turn on and off. Mm. We often have a really wide bandwidth of when we have our AC on. Mm. Um, if you were to reduce that by one hour a day, say trim it at half an hour in the morning and trimming at half an hour in the evenings, you can save 7% of your energy costs. If you make sure that these systems are off on public holidays, you can save 4% over the year. That's 11% without really doing anything at all. And tell me somebody that doesn't want to put 11% of their costs back in their pocket. Look, what you're saying there I think is exactly right because uh, in my energy cut book, uh, I looked at a company that was based in Alice Springs and they changed it literally just, they started half an hour later in the, in the morning, it ended it half an hour earlier and they were saving hundreds of dollars a year and that's just a, a small company in Alice Springs. So you're right, it's, it's amazing what you can do. Paul, what, what are the other ways we can save? Well, at the more complex end, if you look at something like a fan, Fans um, are used in air conditioning systems obviously to move air around, but the amount of air that you move around depends on how much uh, load there is in the building. When it's a really hot day, you need to move lots of air, and when, when, there's a, when there's not much load, you don't need to move very much. But lots of systems do uh, that badly, and so they um, use far too much air when the loads aren't very high. Turning that down so you use less air at a lower pressure uh, during periods of low load 
will save you masses of energy. Up to 40% savings on fan energy are quite common. Wow, so for, you're literally talking about 40% reduction in one of the biggest energy costs uh, in a business. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Now, um, with regards to the guide itself, I was reading it, and there seems to be some technical terms there. Uh, for people watching now, is it too technical, or, you know, or have, you, have you written this in plain English? The guide is written in plain English. It is a technical area. You do need to uh, sometimes call in the specialists. But if you've got a complex uh, air conditioning system, you will have specialists working on it. Now, in terms of, uh, you know, from, from your point of view, Tom, what do you think is the main benefit of the guide? I think the main benefit of the guide is that it puts into the hands of people that are working with facility managers or building managers. It gives them a basis for a conversation. It gives them a, way, a structured way of saying, so, have we looked at this and what about that? I'm really keen to, to explore these savings opportunities. And it gives them something, a basis for that conversation and, and to really get behind the, the plant room door, if you like, and have a bit of a conversation. So, uh, for people watching now thinking, well, this is great, I want to get these savings, where can they go for more information? Listen, the simplest thing is to just search Action Matters and you'll find their the OEH website where you will find all of our information for business. Click through to guides and it'll be right there. Okay, so Google Action Matters and that's, that's how to best get the information. Absolutely. Action Matters, that's there, the two terms. Tom, Paul, thank you for joining us. We really, really appreciate your input. Thank you. Pleasure, John.